I'm Anil Kumar and here is a practice question for you to find positive and negative interval for a given function. The question is, write positive and negative interval for the rational function r of x equals to x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. Now these questions could be very tricky. The steps involved here are, first find the x-intercept, right? First find the x-intercept. Now what is x-intercept? At x intercept, you know y equals to 0, so you can substitute y equals to 0. y means r of x in this case, right? So that means r of x in this particular case. So if I equate 0 for r of x, I get 0 equals to x minus 1 over x plus 1, and that is the case when x is equal to 1, right? So this gives you x equals to 1. That is to say that the x intercept is at x equals to one. So we found x intercept. Now once you find x intercept, you need to figure out on which side of this intercept is the function positive and on which side it is negative, right? So that is one thing. Now the important thing here is to find the vertical asymptote. There is a discontinuity, right? So we also know here that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 1. x equals to minus 1 is not in the domain since then the denominator becomes 0. So how do you find it? You find by equating denominator that cannot be 0, right? So, so x plus 1 is not equal to 0 that means x is not equal to minus 1. So that is a restriction on the domain query. So with the help of this we can kind of sketch our graph. So what we are saying is that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 1. So let me draw this vertical asymptote. It is a line which the function approaches but is never there as x value approaches minus 1. It approaches positive negative or negative, positive infinity or negative infinity, correct? And we also found that the x-intercept is equal to 1, somewhere there, okay? Now it is easy to find the y-intercept. So let us calculate the y-intercept also as it is going to help us to sketch the graph. So y-intercept is when x equals to 0. So if I put x equals to 0, I get r of 0 equals to 0 minus 1 over 0 plus 1 which is negative 1. So, so we can say this is negative 1 which is the y-intercept. This is positive 1 which is the x intercept. Two other important points to consider are what happens when x is a very large value. Now x is very large means it is approaching that value, right? So if I equate a large number, if I substitute large number for this, uh, then what happens? We also call it n behavior. Some of you might not have learned this term by now, but anyway, you are soon to learn about n behavior also. It means if x approaches a large value, could be negative infinity or could be positive infinity, what really happens? Now, as compared to 1, even 1000 is very large. So what you can do is, you can just think about replacing x with 1000 positive and 1000 negative. Right. So what you observe here is that if x is very large, then 1 is small, right? So, so you can say that the function r of x will approach x divided by x, which is, which is 1. So that means it approaches 1. You get an idea, right? So, so we get a horizontal asymptote at x equals to 1. So it is kind of like this. So I'm just sharing with you some steps of uh, sketching. They are not uh, I mean necessary, but it helps to sketch accurately the graph, okay? Now to sketch the graph, what you can do is take some more points. We know that it is approaching, it is never there, and we know it is when you write minus terms which are less than. So you can take a value, let's say half, and then you'll find that the graph is kind of approaching here like this, and uh, like this. So this is how the graph is going to be.
Now, how do you get this curve? It is similar to reciprocal function. So the parent function is a reciprocal function. So how do you get the shape? Shape is, you can say, family of reciprocal function. Is that okay? So the shape will be uh, as per that. And we already found horizontal and vertical asymptotes. You can actually check if the value of x is positive 1000, for example, in that case, numerator will be 1 less than 1000, denominator is 1 more than 1000, so you are slightly less than 1. So that is approaching from down, this value of 1, you see, slightly less than 1. However, if you have negative 1000, in that case, both numerator and denominators are negative, you do get positive 1, but negative 1000, negative 1 is negative 1001, and the denominator will be negative 1000 plus 1, which is negative 999. So it is more than 1. So you approach from the top. So that is how we get this part. And as far as this part is concerned, we know vertical asymptote is at minus 1. So if I substitute a value, which is slightly less than minus 1, let's say point minus 0.9, right? So if I write minus 0.9 here, I will get a very large negative value. So it is approaching negative infinity. And if I write minus 1.1, so you could calculate the values for R 1.1, you will see it approaches large positive, I mean minus, then approaches large positive value. If you substitute minus 0 0.9, it approaches negative infinity. If you substitute R as, let us say, minus 1000, it approaches 1, but from the positive side, and if you substitute r equals to 1000 and calculate using your calculator, it approaches 1 from the negative side. So some of you can actually perform these calculations to sketch uh, the graph correctly. Okay, anyway, now let us answer the question. So one of the important thing here is that the domain is all real numbers except minus 1. Therefore, do not include minus 1 in your answer, right? Okay, so now our solution is interval when the function is positive. So when is it positive? We see it is positive from negative infinity to negative 1 and then from 1 to infinity, right? And then from 1 to infinity, right? And it is negative between minus 1 to 1, correct? Between minus 1 to 1, it is negative. So that is how you should be answering this question. Do not include minus 1 since it is not in your domain, correct? You'll also notice that this function is always increasing in its domain. And that is the case with most of the reciprocal functions. They either always increase or always decrease in their domain. I hope this example gives you a lot of information about rational functions, a review on sketching such functions. And if you have not yet learned, then you can actually make a table of values and sketch a graph. I hope this will surely help you to correctly answer such questions. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe my videos and learn a lot. Thank you and all the best.